Hey everyone, this week we're going to be doing some infrared photography with a Zomi filter. So I'm going to try something today which I've not really done before, which is infrared photography. So I've come to Cannon Hall, which is near Barnsley, it's quite local to me. So I'm going to have a little walk around here and see what I can find to photograph. So I'm going to head up there, I'll speak to you again when I get up there, talk a little bit more about the Zomi filter. So there are basically three ways that you can do infrared photography. Number one would be with a film camera, so using infrared film. We're not going to go into that today, I don't know enough about it. I don't know enough about infrared, let alone film photography. The other ways are to use a digital camera and get it specially converted, so you send it away and they'll convert your sensor so that it only lets the infrared light into the camera. Or the other way to do it, and the cheaper option, is to use an infrared filter. So I've got this one, it's a Zomi or Zomai, Zomi, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, but it's quite a cheap infrared filter. So you just pop this onto your lens, take your image as you would normally. However, it does work a little bit like an ND filter, and it does block quite a lot of the light coming into the camera. So at the moment I'm at ISO 1600, f6.3 and I'm still having to use an exposure time of around about 40 to 50 seconds. So quite a long time to let enough light in to capture an image. But basically, once it has finished, it, you'll end up with a pinky red image on the back of your viewfinder, or live view screen. Viewfinder for me, because I'm using a mirrorless camera. And then later on, you're going to need to take that into your post-processing software, and do some conversions on it to create that classic infrared look in the image. So you can get infrared filters with different anemeter ratings. I chose the 850 nm rating because from what I've read it gives the most contrasty image and when you convert it into black and white that can be the best results from the 850 version. But you can get 720, that's quite a common rating and you can go down to 500 levels, I can't remember the exact numbers. But have a good read if you're going to get one and find out which one's going to be the best for you. Okay so right now I'm in manual mode. I've got my F number set at 4.5, nice and wide to let lots of light in, ISO 1600 and I've got my shutter speed, well I haven't got a shutter speed set, I've actually got it set to time mode. So that means that when I press the shutter button it'll start recording the image and it won't stop until I press the shutter button again. And all I'm doing is with my phone I'm setting a timer for between 40 and 60 seconds and I'm just letting that record, gathering all that light and that's giving me a fairly nice exposure at the moment. You might find that with such a long exposure time that on windy days you get a lot of blur in the leaves on the trees and things like that. But one of the benefits is that if you've got people walking around your scene, they're just going to get blurred out. And that's one of the reasons why infrared can look so eerie and ghostly because you get all those distractions blurred out and you get this really empty looking scene. And that coupled with the weird lighting does give a really ominous look to your image.
One of the things that I've found is that getting enough light into the camera is absolutely key with infrared photography. So you've really got to get your ISO up, you've got to get your aperture nice and wide because the filter really does act like an ND filter just blocking all that light coming in. So it's good to come out when there's plenty of available light. Summer evenings like this are great because you've got light way into the evening but it would also be quite good in the middle of the day with really harsh light. So it's good for those times when as photographers we wouldn't normally take photographs. All right, so the sun's going down now. It's been a bit of a whirlwind tour this evening, but I think I've got some images I can use now. Slight disclaimer, it is my first time doing infrared, so who knows, they might not be usable at all, but we'll see. I'm gonna get back home now, get them onto the computer. That's where the magic happens. And I'm gonna convert them from the red look that you see on the back of the camera into the more classic look that you're familiar with of infrared photography. So great to get out and try something different this week. Never tried infrared photography before and it was really good fun. Shout out to Andrew Walton. He was doing some infrared over on his channel recently and that's where I got the idea to do some and also pick up the Zome filter. But I've seen other YouTubers doing it recently. I know Chris Bateson did some over on his channel and also a little known YouTuber called Thomas Heaton. You might have heard of him. He was doing some recently as well. So who knows, maybe for once in my life I'm on trend, but <laughs> I don't know about that. I did find some challenges doing infrared, mainly around exposures, getting the right exposure time. So I wasn't really concentrating on composition or anything like that in the images in this video, don't judge me on that. Really I was just concentrating on how to get a good exposure because it does block loads of light, like I said earlier. It's like a, an ND filter. And so I was having to use ISOs of around about 1000 to 1600 F numbers between 4 and 6.3 but no narrower than that. And that was still giving me shutter speeds of around about 40 to 60 seconds to get the correct exposure. So quite slow and because it was breezy I was getting a lot of motion blur with the leaves in the trees. To get a sharp shot I would have to have my ISO at crazy levels. So that was a bit of a challenge. Perhaps if you're using the 720nm or lower, you might be able to get more visible light into the camera and that might increase the shutter speed. Again, I don't know, I've not tried them. Um, but I would like to try those, particularly to compare against the Zomi. Uh, because I don't think this is the best filter out, out there, which you'd expect because, you know, 25 pound filter. It did a fine job in regards to blocking the visible light, no problems there. Definitely created an infrared image. But I did get some issues with flaring, particularly when I was shooting directly into the sun. And some of the images I took have a bit of a problem with vignetting. So there's a, a bright vignette. And I'm guessing that's caused by the filter. And because it's the infrared light coming through, that's creating a bright vignette rather than a dark one. Easy to remove in Lightroom, but something to think about. But, you know, for a £25 filter, you can't complain too much. It did do a decent job. So there's just a few more images to show you. So I'll put those up on screen now.
So that's almost it for another video. Thanks a lot for watching everyone. Really do appreciate it as always. Next week I'm going to be going through how I process these images. So how I went from the black and red result that you get on the back of the camera all the way through to the classic infrared look that you've seen in the images throughout this video. Quite a lot of Lightroom and Photoshop processing that goes into that, so covering all that next week. All the usual stuff now, please give me a like, if you're new to the channel, click on the red button, or on my face over here. New video, every Sunday morning, 10am UK time. So, I really do hope you'll catch me next week for the editing video, but until then, thanks a lot everyone, and bye for now.